خوره Hello and welcome to another episode of Fleetcast. As you can see, I am joined by another lovely person in the form of Endy. Hello, how are you everybody? And this episode is a little bit of a unique one because it's based on holidays. And as we are just getting out of the um, holiday season, by the time this goes out, we thought it would be a good time to talk about some different episodes that come from television shows, comics, movies, things like that, but we thought we'd first start with the big one. As we're a primary Trek community, we thought we'd get into Federation Day. Yep. How are you? So, what are your thoughts around Federation Day? Honestly, I'm... Federation Day is one of the ones that I'm not as big on, because Generations as a movie is one of the ones I'm not as big on. Yeah. Admittedly. Okay. It's an interesting one, um, as it's one of the key holidays, isn't it, in the Star Trek yes. universe? You know, as the, as the as the title suggests, it's you know, it's there to celebrate the founding of the United Federation of Planets, um, and yeah. obviously it's one of the big momentous dates in the franchise. But yeah, no, I think because it became such a big thing in that movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, it's. The, the question, of course, is, you know, is it that or is it about, um, you know, we go from there, we say, oh, but then we have to talk about Robert and, and the family and the fire. And, you know, I have enough fire that happened in my life to to a house. Thankfully, no one was hurt. So it kind of that one, like I said, Generations as a movie has some great points yeah not one of them <laughs> but i like the idea that's one thing that i think a lot of sci-fi misses is those important dates that are not just earth dates yeah um so you've got federation day and of course the other big one april 5th first contact day yes which I really, really like because it's celebrated in character and mm -hmm. out of character. Like, I know Obsidian Fleet, we do events yeah. around it. I know that people actually yep. go to Bossman, Montana, don't they? And they actually do yeah. the celebration there. I just mm -hmm. think it's it's one of the more unique ones. And, you know, there's always memes going around the internet going, it's it's this many years until Vulcans come to, come to Earth and things like that. And... Yeah. I think that's what sci-fi do, does very well with these holidays. A lot of them, while they were just shown in the shows, they have become big things for the fans. Yeah, they've definitely become important. I mean, especially since we're at T-minus 40. T-minus 40, yeah. definitely. <laughs> so what, what, so... Do we, what do we do if we get to, you know, T-minus, this is the day, and no one shows up? Do we? Do, what do we do? <laughs> Does the celebration well, still continue? I, I I think it would have to. <laughs> and besides, if we get there, we darn well better have a warp drive. I like to hope so. We have some type of uh, some type of um transport that's a little bit faster than a car. That would be very handy. Yes. <laughs> and the ability I mean, to go into space, you know, just for everyday everyday people you know we don't have to be astronauts to to yeah. go there that would be nice astronauts are billionaires yes yeah, astronauts are billionaires. <laughs> yeah or both because not everybody is very very Sadly. much but yeah no, i i think <laughs> yeah. trek does holidays very very well um yeah. you know i think you know trek is as a community we like these type of holidays it kind of allows us to bring <laughs> star trek a little bit more into our real lives and i kind oh, of absolutely. yeah i kind of like that um I, I i've been trying to think of other star trek holidays but I, off, off the top of my head um, i can't think of any i know there's some that are celebrated in voyager actually that's one where it's not off the top of my head but i found it when i was looking there is a holiday that Neelix celebrates. Yes, it's a Talaxian holiday, wasn't it? Called Brixen. Yep. It's Talaxian, and it sounds a lot like 
a Christmas celebration. Um, so that one as well, and um, there was a Vulcan one that I saw that. It, oh yeah, the 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 one that wasn't around for a millennium because it involved them running around naked and doing things. Yeah, it it was kind of it, yes. it kind of sounded like pagan. It was a kind of more a pagan approach to holiday. Yes. Which well, I've just realized, which is quite funny, seeing we are recording this and it's Yule. So happy Yule. It is. So yeah. yes, happy Yule to everyone. May it be <laughs> another like, blessed year. Night. <laughs> yep. That's quite a funny thing. I didn't even twig that when we decided this date and then we decided the subject. Hey. It's Yule today. So yeah. Convenient. Nice yep. <laughs> Very convenient. Um there's another holiday and I cannot remember the name of it. Um The the holiday that was in eleven fifty nine. I can't Voyager. Remember. Okay, because there was a um the thing about the Millennium Gate. Okay, have so to I, have I don't remember. Don't <laughs> 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 or have... it's it's one <laughs> episode, and I know that a lot of people don't like. 1159 um which is fair because it's very much a family episode it's a it's an episode of trek that is not trek yeah but i still enjoy it um it was it was a millennium sort of celebration yeah because it was the one that was um sort of focused on Janeway, wasn't it yes and and on Janeway's ancestor in 1999. Yeah. And of course, when did the episode air? In 1999. Yeah. Right as we were looking toward the beautiful new millennium, which, well, let's not get into how it's turned out. Yeah, it's a bit of an old but, one. But hey, you know what? We're here, and that's important. Yeah. And we're going to keep going, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll be here for the next one, too. I, I, 100% the human spirit, you yeah. know, it kind of allows us to do that. But yeah, now I can't figure, yes. out, I can't figure out which one it is, but shall we move on to the next one? Oh, absolutely. Do you want to move on to a different franchise? Because you want to, yep, I know you I... want to talk about Star Wars, don't you? A little. A little. Um, Go on then. <laughs> I, it, it's my guilty pleasure franchise. I'll say that. Um, there's two from there. The obvious one that uh, people who watch the streaming era show, The Mandalorian, saw, but which I saw on a very old VHS, Life Day, <laughs> on the Star Wars Holiday Special. Yes. Um originally a Wookiee celebration that then became a Rebel Alliance celebration that then became a New Republic celebration and depending on which continuity you follow even echoed into later uh, governments and later populations. So tell us a little bit about it. Um, um, essentially it's Christmas with the serial numbers filed off. <laughs> um, it's a day to celebrate you know family and peace and joy and happiness and you know having good food to eat and there's songs that are sung and there's you know plays that are put on and it all depends on which planet as well um, what you're doing for it yeah and again because it was in just one holiday special that was for Christmas at the time, it was very Christmassy <laughs> at the time and has sort of taken on also some elements of Thanksgiving and um, other holidays in this time period. Yeah. Because um, it was the seen... 70s, wasn't it? Yep. It yeah. was, I think, 79. 78 or 79 I've like I said I've seen the uh, VHS version of it so 
I, I came after that one. <laughs> we both did. Uh, we both did. We're, we're, spring yeah. chi- we're spring chickens, really. Exactly. We're still young. <laughs> um, ignore the white in the beard, right? <laughs> and the, you know the hair. Dye it. I'll dye yeah. it next time. <laughs> Good idea. We both will. Uh, <laughs> um, the other one from Star Wars is a little less known. Um, even though it was a pivotal point in one of the movies. Okay. It's Bunta Eve, and the only celebration we see of it is the Bunta Eve Classic, which is the pod race that uh, Anakin is in in Episode 1. Okay. That's an interesting um, one. Yep. It's also... Uh, referenced in the Star Wars Episode One Pod Racer game, because that's kind of your end goal is getting to the Bunta Classic. Okay. Um. There's also, I think, a reference to it in. I mean, I know there's references to it in a couple of the books, the where they stand in canon now with Disney. Yeah. Who knows? But I think that I think that comes from yeah. any book series. In, really, it's a show. The Star oh, yeah. Trek's the same. Oh, definitely. And even I know like that Power Rangers is the same with the comics and things like that. You know, a lot of it is a oh, bit yeah. like. <laughs> oh yeah, because I'm. I mean, didn't one of the comics that involved Time Force say that they celebrated the day that the Rangers defeated Rita? I think. Yeah, so, you know, book series... Something like that. Yeah, book series and comic yeah. series are very high, but they do give some good references to holidays, which is nice. They do. They do. And that's, again, that's something that makes the world feel more real. Um, Yeah, that that's actually one of the things that I think is a little bit lacking in Lord of the Rings. For everything that, that Professor Tolkien did when he built that series, that was one thing that he didn't delve much into was you know you've got creatures that have been alive for hundreds of or thousands of years and out of it we get Durin's day and that's about it yeah maybe you know the Gondorian New Year yeah both of those are referenced you know when I was doing some research for this podcast both of those are very very well referenced but they're not they're not ones that appeal to me I mean, the ones that appealed to me were more the sci-fi ones. Um, yep. You know, and moving on to one that I kind of want to celebrate is it's Colonial Day from Battlestar Galactica, um, mm-hmm. and this is obviously in the modern reboot of the um, the 1970s franchise. <laughs> and what I liked about the Colonial Day is it's an annual day to mark the signing of the Articles of Colonization. Um, in obviously the 2005 episode of the same name, the screw, the the crew um, celebrate 52 years of the cooperation, um, and obviously before the articles of cooperation were signed, the 12 colonies were basically separate um, separate planets, and the only way they could survive the Cylon War was by signing. You know the articles and becoming the 12 colonies and i just think it's such a good celebration because we've got the law of the past and we kind of see it through um battlestar galactica and how moving forward they keep going back to the fact that they need that cooperation and it, it's kind of an ongoing thing mm-hmm. but i really just like how battlestar galactica does holidays um yeah it's, yeah. it's a good one Oh, definitely. Um, Galactica, when it hits, it's it's great. Whether that's the original or the reboot, mm-hmm. uh, the less said about Galactica nineteen eighty, the better. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it it, it definitely yeah. gets the family element. Yeah, that's, and what I liked about how ba- thing. yeah, and what I liked about how Battlestar Galactica did it is the fact that they actually showed it in multiple seasons. Obviously we've got mm-hmm. the we've got the episode of, you know, the name and obviously what, what goes on in that episode. Because I'm not gonna give any spoilers because I actively encourage everyone to watch Battlestar Galactica. It's it's two thousand you know, two thousand sci fi at its best. Um mm-hmm. 
and it's just it starts a theme of cooperation that just just leads through the whole series and you know without without giving the spoilers because yeah. I, I don't want to do that because I, I really want you to watch it um yes. it, yeah it's just it's a theme and it it's it kind of gives over how humans have to cooperate together to defeat yeah. the Cylons or find a way to cooperate with the Cylons and yeah yes. just it's it's one of my favorite holidays from television shows sounds good and I mean, as far as encouraging people to watch Galactica, I'm also going to say watch the original as well. Yes. Because Lorne Green is amazing. And if you think Star Trek is a space western, then you haven't seen Galactica. <laughs> because Star Trek is wagon train, sort of. Star Trek is... Uh, Kung Fu, sort of. Galactica is a Western set in space. Yeah. The, there's no two ways around it. Yeah. Um, going to another one that unfortunately is not so much cel a celebration as a commemoration um, is it, it's first referenced in Terminator 2 and then echoes through basically the entire series. Judgment Day, August 29th, 1997, the day that Skynet comes online. Um, it's It starts with absolute hell and nuclear fire and just death, destruction, and horror. But it seems like every year there's an attack on Skynet from the human factions at that time. Um, whether it's in the novels, whether it's in the video games, whether it's in other media. Because um, there are quite a few Terminator 2 related or Terminator related games from the mid 90s 2000s yeah. etc and at least two of them take place on different years judgment day yeah or or have their final mission on that day what happens that's, obviously because we know that in some of the lore judgment day changes mm -hmm. so do you do you yeah. think that that changes the holiday or I yeah I think no matter what happens, I mean, Judgment Day, okay, the problem with Terminator and, and figuring out when things happen and how things happen is there are multiple continuities. Yeah. Like, they acknowledge it. Um, so I don't think it changes every, it changes anything because it doesn't even matter if it's on the same day. The point is, this is the day that the fight against Skynet started. Yeah. This is the day that humanity made the biggest mistake possible when a third to a half of the population was killed by giant robots and nuclear weapons. And then that's when the fight starts. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the big one about it, is no matter when, it's the anniversary of when we start to fight. Which is, which is, an, which is an interesting one, because we don't normally see a holiday like that. We normally yeah. see it as a celebration, as, you know, um, recognizing something positive, maybe. Um, but this holiday is very much it's it's used to rally rally the troops, so to speak. That exactly. makes sense, yeah. It's used to rally yeah. the troops, which is which is a very different concept than what we see in other holidays. I don't think I don't well, I can't I can't think of any other holiday that's that's similar to it. Um, honestly, there are a couple that that some of them I know the names of, some of them I don't. 
off the top of my head, but um, frankly, a lot of the uh, Jewish fast days are commemorations of wrongs done. Um, it's a matter of, you know, that depends on your culture because, yeah, a lot of the Christian holidays and feasts are positive and family and this and that, but You've got um, even you know Hanukkah, which was which is kind of the happiest one right now. You know, Purim is actually the happiest holiday, but even that commemorates things. Um, you've got Passover, that was the flight from the desert. Mm-hmm. Um, all sorts of those holidays where it's commemoration of a wrong done. I was thinking more in shows than you know in real life, but yeah. Well, but I'm I'm saying that's where sort of that comes from. But in shows, um, there are commemorations of battles in various shows. Um, I, I there's a couple that I can that I can't even think of. There's well, there's a couple in Transformers that I know are referenced in the comics. Yeah. That they talk about. Oh, this battle happened this day. Um, technically in history, I guess, um, Henry V, the Agincourt battle, St. Swithin's Day, um, there, as I said, there are a couple of sort of wider scale ones that reference battles and all sorts of others, and any military fiction is going to have those sorts of things. Uh, Battletech. I don't know if you're familiar with it at all. Right now. Uh, long story short, Earth went crazy. Uh, there's giant mechs that the people fight in where it, it's split across three different centuries. Um, yeah. <laughs> they reference old battles in the fiction. Yeah. Um, Star Wars. In fact, one of the biggest ones from Star Wars was the Battle of Yavin, which, of course, you know the original Star Wars, the ending of that. Uh, such a holiday that they changed the freaking calendar. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's one of those things of sometimes you do need those days where, okay, so a very bad thing happened this day. And we're not going to let it happen again. Yeah. Um, which I guess, taking the other time that we see first contact day from Star Trek, other than uh, in the movie, which is the only other time we see James Cromwell's uh, Zephyr Cochran, I wonder how the Terran Empire would celebrate first contact day. Oh, that's an interesting one. I might have to do because on um, SS Mary Rose, because I've got yeah. a bit of a, I've got a bit of um, a mirror universe thing going on where it's mm-hmm. not the same mirror universe that we see in in the shows where Spock became the Empire and the, then obviously humans yeah. lost and become you know roles were reversed. It's basically it's very yes. much going from Discovery's um, Terran Empire where it, it just carried on. Um, but okay. I might have to just I might have to have a conversation with some people about that because that's interesting. I'd never in, I'd never yep. considered that before. Yep. Hmm. yep. Think about that one. Yeah, and also I, I, might, about, I might have we to. We have Federation um, Day. Do they have Empire Day? Yeah, I'm guessing it would be Empire Day. Yeah. It would probably it would probably be you know a celebration of them Destroying overlording the, Vulcan. the Vulcans. Probably. I know they do. They do do celebrations. They do um, do events around battles. So maybe that's what they do. Because I know they exactly. celebrate. They sense. celebrate. Oh. There's a couple that I've seen when I've been doing research for like Mirror Universe, where I know they celebrate yeah. a lot of the battles. So yeah, but well, I'm definitely gonna, you have I'm, to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk to Paul and Sarani about that. <laughs> well, there you go. You've, you've, you've sparked a couple that's of one more but Good. moving on to one that's almost silly and it's 
to, well, to me, it's silly and it's hilarious, is Slaps Given from How I Met Your Mother. Basically, mm-hmm. Slaps Given was first introduced in How I Met Your Mother in 2007. Um, although this is a holiday that most people might want to pass on, it takes mm-hmm. place on Thanksgiving every year. And it was um, created by Barney as Barney's character when he lost a slap a bet given <laughs> by Marshall Erickson. Um, so five slaps to be administered to Barney at any given time he desired. Mm-hmm. And though it's not a fun holiday because obviously for the slap re- per- the person who's getting yeah. slapped, it's such a comic episode and it's just such a fun twist on a holiday which I think is even funnier for me because obviously I'm not American. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, but well, you when should. I... <laughs> but when, obviously, I was researching this because I was like, yes, I want to put slap, slaps given in this. Um, the website that I was mm-hmm. looking at gave me ways to celebrate. Basically, mm-hmm. you have ways to celebrate include choosing a slapper by the noble slap master, creating a slap countdown to the big event, cutting out hand-shaped paper turkeys, um, and it also has an official uh-huh. song, and I just found the whole concept absolutely hilarious. Well, well, those hand-shaped paper turkeys are not just for that, um, because that was something that when I was in school you used to do that. Yeah, we we do it for like would be the head of the turkey. Yeah, and, we yeah. do it for like Halloween things, and I think probably Valentine's Day. Interesting. So it's 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 not just obviously interesting. Yeah, it's not just a Thanksgiving one, but I just found this was quite a funny flip of Thanksgiving. Yep. And I would highly recommend if you've never seen any other episode of How I Met Your Mother, is just to look at this one because it's it's so good and it's. It's Neil. Um, what's his name? Uh, Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris at his best, and this is going out after the Doctor Who mm. episode. So I can actually say he is yep. even better in this episode oh. than I think in Doctor oh, Who. He, was, because... in... he huh? was in Doctor Who. Yeah. Now I have to actually look him up. Have you not? Now looked? I have to look those episodes. You have nope, to look because you have to. You have okay. To look. Okay. He, he... Understand I. I have tried to watch Doctor Who, um, and what happened was I watched one of the old serials, one of the black and white ones. You started at the wrong point. I tried watching, um, uh, what's his name with, with the scarf? That's still that's still way, way too far back. You should have started with the 2005 start. Um, Christopher Eccleston. That's the nearly bald guy, the one who yeah. Oh, you could have even doors and shit. You, yeah. you could have even started, I started with the movie. I tried. Okay. I I have not. Like I said, that was one where I tried, and I've bounced off it because it's just like I want to like it. I want I want to have more than just respect for it. Yeah. But it's just one where it, it didn't. It didn't quite hit me. Yeah. You know? But if you um, do like Neil Patrick Harris, I would highly recommend oh yes. watching this because he is oh yeah. utterly amazing in this series. And he yes. sparked a million memes. Um, a million memes, <laughs> oh, sorry. Good. Memes. Memes. Yeah. Memes. 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 Yep. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's eight o'clock at night here. I'm very tired. <laughs> Understood. It's he has literally sparked, and so many Star Trek memes have, have you know been created from a moment yes. in, from this Doctor Who episode. He is he's right. he's brilliant. I'll have to look then. Oh yeah. But how I met your mother was just brilliant for him, and yes. the fear that he has on his face because obviously Marshall <laughs> is is doing slaps given. It's it's just so funny it's it's a it's one of those holidays that are just yeah. it's just fun and i think some holidays need to be like that yeah absolutely have you got another um, holiday? i've got one more okay that is again less of a holiday and more of a commemoration okay uh that does get sort of celebrated twice and maybe gets a sly reference in another show okay um 
the breakaway from Space 1999. Oh, I haven't heard that seriously in a long time. Okay. Well, Space 1999, for those who aren't familiar with every piece of obscure sci-fi under the sun, uh, was a Cope British and American production um, that was sort of lost in space, but less family. Okay. Um, space 1999 was about a moon base, specifically Moon Base 2, mm-hmm. getting knocked off its moorings and sent into outer space. Um, and their attempts to either cope with that or get home to Earth. And it starred um, Martin Landau and... Oh, what's her name? Um, his wife. Uh, can't remember. Let me check. I cannot remember her real name. I only remember her name from one show. And let me see. Barbara Bain. Barbara Bain was her name. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I know her and him is because Martin Landau, for us Trekkies, was actually the number two person uh, on the list to play Spock. But instead went to a different series. Okay. Mission Impossible, where he played the character Rollin Hand. And then <clears throat> when he and Barbara Bain left Mission Impossible, of course, after Star Trek ended, Nimoy went over there and played um, Paris, the magician. Okay. So it's all very, you know, it's as weird as it sounds, it's all kind of tightly connected. Um, Space 1999, Star Trek are connected, um, and of course, Mission Impossible with it, and one moment, you will actually have to edit this one. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know why. Something got caught in my throat. (coughs) Uh, but, um, you've got all these, you know, characters... And it gets referenced in both seasons that this is the anniversary of the breakaway. Um, and then in uh, in Galactica, they reference it in the first one when they mention the first colony is breaking away. Yeah. That was a very sly reference to it. So do they do anything on this 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 Un- unfortunately no it's again it's more of a commemoration than a holiday holiday but um it's it's one of those things that I think is another one that's important to remember because it's the day that that culture started that yeah. they left earth um and that's one of those things that I like in some of the, the sci-fi is that they do make reference to this is when things were different. This yeah. is the day. Um, and if you are writing sci-fi, make up holidays. We actually do on Atlantis. We actually have, we've only, obviously we've in character, we've only been one year mm-hmm. lost in space, but we do yeah. have like, there is a set of posts around how people are feeling, how people are, you know, I don't want to say celebrating, um, yeah. but you know how they're dealing with a year since we've got lost, we've got lost in space. So it's nice, yeah. You know, it's, I think the universes that we write in are really good for allowing us to create our own holidays. Um, Absolutely. On SS Mary Rose, I created a holiday. It's like a harvest holiday. On you, have you have you seen Lower Decks? Not yet, no. no. That's one that... So there's, there's a planet yeah. on there that has dragons. So okay. my crew wanted to go dragon riding. So I created <laughs> a whole holiday for them. Um, okay. I'm trying to think. Uh, what did I call it? 
it might just be harvest it might have just been might as well it might have been just as simple as calling it harvest but let me have a look see what i could. that is entirely possible i i was not unfortunately i wasn't there looking at it so i don't remember oh um, it, it, the, the, yeah the holiday is just it's i think it's just oh the fest it's just the harvest festival but we okay. we literally had i'm going to try and bring up my mission guide for it now um hysteria okay so so the colony is called hysteria um okay. and it's like it's basically a ren fair type world um so i done interesting like, so i created a whole harvest festival so they have a torchlit parade of the skiff the skiff and the first seed um they have king and queen of the harvest they have um dragon jousting harvest games um masquerade ball um celebration of the thankful and then like there's like mm -hmm. there's just loads of parades and things like that so you know See, yes yeah. and that's what we need more in sci-fi and in fantasy and just yes for any of us who are writing don't be afraid of them yes i, I think that's the other thing that yeah that, and if anyone's watching back this to the top and they want to and they want to share their festivals please comment below you know yes provide link all, all, we're, we're, everything we're down listening. below um anything that we missed also yes down below uh any holidays that you celebrate or that you think need to be celebrated more please you know like comment subscribe ring yeah. the bell blah, like, blah, comment, blah. yeah and obviously if we have enough of them we might actually do a part two so you might see us again oh yeah but i think absolutely i think for now you know to bring in 2024 i think this is a good good place to finish and you know yes, yes. and we'll see you next may time maybe a, a maybe a, a blessed yule a good christmas a happy new year and a wonderful time to all and may 2024 be a brighter year than 2023 was definitely but for now keep safe keep writing bye <laughs>